Some people say modding your vehicle is like throwing money out the window, but if you're like the owner of this Jeep and your vehicle is a reflection of your personality and you also happen to love off-roading, then it really doesn't matter how much you spend. Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Now in today's episode, I've got a 2021 Jeep Wrangler here that looks like it's been out wheeling a few times already this year, but as you can see, this is not your regular average Jeep. It's got quite a few modifications on it, some of which actually make my job a little bit more challenging. So we'll talk about that and more today, so stay tuned. Have you ever watched my videos and wondered, how on earth do you have the energy to get through all the marathon disaster details you do week in and week out? Or wondered, how do you put up with Lord Mike and all of his crazy shenanigans? Well, it's because of this. <sighs> really, Mike? <laughs> no, it's not candy that keeps me going. It's AG1. I've been using AG1 for nearly two years now because it's convenient nutrition made simple. As a busy guy, it's the perfect way to make sure I get my nutrients every day and feel my best, no matter what each day holds. It's super convenient. Just mix one scoop with about eight to 12 ounces of water and boom, a delicious and super healthy drink that can help with all sorts of things like immunity, digestion, energy and endurance, and even brain health. But best of all, is that it actually tastes good too. Heck, I've even tried to get Mike to start using AG1 too, because there is no question he could benefit from more energy and endurance, but, and then I realized who I was talking to. Yeah, he's a lost cause. But if any of you guys out there want to simplify your health routine a bit, then I'd highly recommend giving AG1 a look. And now is a great time to do it. Just tap my link in the description to get a one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D3 and K2 and five travel packs free on your first purchase. You just can't put a price on your own health. Okay, thanks to Athletic Greens for sponsoring this video. Now let's get to work on the vehicle. Okay guys, well getting to work on the Jeep now, and since I've done a few of these before, I know that Wranglers are full of crevices, like the door hinges and fender flares for example, so it's going to be critical to get those sprayed out really well, and I have to say that I'm already enjoying the fact that this Jeep is lifted, and more of my height, so I don't have to bend over as much today. Okay, working my way around the Jeep, and to give you a little bit of background on it, the owner has put about $10,000 of modifications into it, an obvious one being the two inch lift, and another of these 37 inch wheels you're looking at, which I think look really good on the vehicle. But other than that, the owner also has a pretty sweet worn winch up front, aftermarket steel bumpers front and back, and then a few rigid LED spotlights up front too. Altogether, I think it's tastefully done, and the Jeep looks awesome.
All right, well, uh, usually right now I'd be grabbing my undercarriage sprayer to you know get all the dirt and the muck sprayed off the underside here, but because this Jeep is lifted and there's so much ground clearance here, using the sprayer wouldn't really uh, be very effective because the, you know, the spray would be coming from so far away. So I'm um, just opting for the pressure washer here. That way I'll be able to kind of get in there a little bit closer, vary the angle a bit, and uh, yeah, just make sure that I don't miss any spots. Alright, well since most of the front end and especially the windshield was covered in bug guts, I'm going ahead and using some of my bug remover, which I'm sure you'll be seeing a lot more of going forward as the bugs are almost out in full force now and this will dissolve what's stuck to the Jeep and make it really easy to remove during the wash stage. All right, well, while I get the Jeep washed here, I figured I'd answer a question that I see all the time and quite a bit on the last few videos actually, and that's whether or not I clean, detail, and protect the roofs of the vehicles as well. The answer is of course I do. There isn't an inch of the vehicle that goes untouched, and at least with roofs anyways, it's kind of hard to get a good angle on this so you guys can see what I'm doing, so I don't usually film it, but just know they're always done, and uh, yeah, I, I usually just stand on the rear tire. Um, because I've got long arms, I can reach everywhere pretty easily. Okay, with all the personal items removed, I can get to work on vacuuming, and thankfully the rubber floor mats did their job well, and there's really not much in here for debris, but one thing about the mods on this Jeep that makes it more challenging for me today is the fact that it's lifted and there's no running boards. During an average detail, I'm probably in and out of the vehicle a hundred times, and that's just made all the more challenging when I have to climb in and out.
Okay, moving to the back now, and I wanted to quickly remind you guys that if you enjoy the natural sounds of detailing, then be sure to check out the second channel, The Detail Geek 2, and every week there's a new ASMR video, and I also wanted to let you know in case you missed the announcement, but I now have a show on Snapchat, so be sure to check that out and give me a follow over there as well. Alright, well despite the carpets not being dirty in here, most of the plastic trim was, so I'll need to use some APC and the steamer to get it all clean, but fortunately the design of the Jeep means there isn't a ton of plastic trim in here, so this won't be a super lengthy step today. Moving to the pedals now and to answer a question I've seen asked a fair bit recently, the reason I clean the pedals after the carpet is because when agitating with the drill brush, it tends to fling solution all over the pedals and trim, so rather than repeating work, I opt to do the pedals afterwards because controlling that mess is easily taken care of by putting a towel down. Okay, now that the leather is clean, I'll get some of my leather conditioner applied, which is enriched with lanolin to nourish and protect the leather, leaving it feeling soft and supple. You can, of course, find this over on my website at detailgeekautocare.com, where worldwide shipping is available.
Jumping back outside now and to give this paint some protection, I'm using my graphene spray coating today, which will boost the depth and gloss and really make this black paint shine, which you'll get to see in just a minute during the reveal shots. Okay, last step in the detail today is to get some of my tire dressing applied to these beefy 37 inch Toyos and with them being so big, yeah, it takes a little bit longer than usual. All right guys, well a full eight hours went into this beast of a Jeep to get it all cleaned up and looking absolutely sick again. And I gotta say that this looks like a rig that you could have some serious fun with off-road and probably get into quite a bit of trouble too. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this one, make sure you smash the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check me out on all my other social media like Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, and Instagram. And I'll see you guys in the next one.